Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. P Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call, please. Bastion? Here. Clark? Here. Fish? Here. Hausman? Parsons? Here. Wakefield? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. I'd entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Parsons, second by Wakefield to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Agenda is approved. Visitors and timed items. We have the opportunity for anyone in the audience uh, up to five minutes if they have something to address the council. Crickets. We're hearing crickets. Okay. Um, no visitors and timed items at this point, so we'll move on to sewer capital projects work session. Mr. Brown. Thank you. Um, we, what we've handed out in front of you is kind of a, a list of sanitary sewer projects that we've identified uh, along with city staff uh, that uh, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of summarizes kind of what we're anticipating over the next few years uh, of needs. And so what I was going to do, uh, each one of these exhibits, most, most each one of the numbers have a corresponding exhibit that goes along with them. And if you'd like, we can pull it up. Otherwise, what, I, what I'd like to do is just kind of explain each one of the projects uh, briefly. Uh, the West Side Trunk Sewer, I won't take a lot of time because I think you guys are uh, aware of most of these. The West Side Trunk Sewer is the project that's planned for next summer which is the new trunk line that will be running from our new lift station along the railroad tracks, crossing Holly Boulevard, and uh, will follow, I guess, uh, uh, get the, along the railroad tracks until we get to Main Avenue and then extending down to Aspen. Um, and then at Aspen, uh, we are planning to upgrade the lift station at the pool and uh, lift that... Uh, wastewater so we have a more capacity out of that lift station at the pool so that we uh, are backwash from the water treatment plant as well as the new development that is proposed in that area has uh, more capacity so that project is uh, the bigger one that we're looking at is about 1.36 million that includes engineering fees uh, associated with that so each one of these projects, we've included a, a cost estimate of the construction or the overall project cost of each one of them, except one. We have not done an updated cost estimate of the one because we feel it's kind of down the road a little bit yet, but we'll talk about that. The core reconstruction area. Um, if you look at the next map, it's, we have identified the red lines are lines that need to be replaced over time. And we've identified the core area and then the um, Rushmore area that in this in this packet. So the core area is the area between uh, Maine and the high school, and from Holly Boulevard south to Aspen. That's kind of what we call the core area, and that has a lot of uh, clay pipe in it that has sags and tree roots and things like that in it. And over time, we wanted to replace those. So we've identified a project in there over the next uh, several years uh, and identified a certain dollar amount of approximately $500,000 a year to cover some of those costs. So does that have to be done in any uh, particular order with, we, you know, tied in with the other ones, or are we going to get into that? Uh, we can get into that. Um, what we are what we are doing, as you know, the we're, we're calling the West Side Trunk Sewer, which is the one we just talked about. It kind of borders the west side of that. So our intention was to move from west to east on those projects of reconstruction. So, so from the west side. So the next project would be the Main Avenue area, and Main and and uh, going east first, second, all the way until we get to the high school area and then there's some uh, sewer lines behind the high school or south of the high school that also need to be upgraded. So what we're anticipating is possibly after this year, maybe one 
stretch, if you will, one lineman uh, from Holly South to Aspen, one block, or I'll call it one uh, segment, each year thereafter, and that's where the 500,000 comes from. Uh, we kind of identified that in, uh, uh, if you recall in the budget, when we were talking about budget, we we're talking about doing a, basically a mill and an overlay. And our intent originally was to start on the opposite side and work our way towards the middle because that mill and overlay is simply a band-aid to get us by 10 years because we anticipate this to have to take place over several years. And so if you can see each one of those lines, you know, you're looking at at least eight or 10 years before we get to the south side of the high school. Make sense? Yeah, well, from a staging standpoint, how how difficult would how difficult would it be if we doubled up each year and we did two? I think it's going to come down to your funding. I think a bigger portion of that, I guess, what I would say, uh, ideally, you know, you know, we've talked about this in the past. Do you pay cash or do you borrow money? I think we were planning on even borrowing this each year, um, but if you wanted to bite off a bigger chunk, you certainly could do that. You just have to borrow. We're going to end up borrowing that money, I think, to pay that down over time. And that's certainly a way to look at it. I know on the Sylvan Circle area, we looked at doing that. And every other year, we were doing a project and just trying to pay cash out of those. And that we really depleted our fund. I mean, our sewer fund is pretty depleted now. Uh, we also paid for some of our street surfacing because with that, it helped pay for that. But uh, I, th I think going forward, I think we need to look at, and Brian and I, this is really Brian's idea, is to pay for our sewer from the sewer fund, our water from the water fund, and then possibly sales tax to cover some of the street surfacing improvements. Do you agree with that, Brian? So. So that kind of summarized, so if you wanted to look at that core area, I would say from Split Rock Boulevard to Ellis and Eastern Railroad, from Holly to Aspen, over the next 10 years, I, we were anticipating half a million dollars a year for, for that duration to cover the cost of those projects. Okay, so that's the core reconstruction area. Rushmore area, sanitary sewer. As you guys know, we uh, started out with a Sylvan and Teton uh, project. We tried to bid it this summer. The bids come in uh, a little over our estimate due to the uh, bidding environment and the time of year, basically. And so we're going to finish up the Sylvan Circle area, what you see in red, uh, this next summer. Uh, and that's uh, estimated at approximately um, $270,000 worth of sewer costs next year. And then uh, what we've estimated, if you look at the description uh, uh, on the top of the second page there, it says project estimate estimate to sewer fund, future phases, meaning each year of another 300000 a year to cover the core area, or not the core area, I'm sorry, the Rushmore area sewer improvements. And that would uh, cover uh, a similar size to what you see in red here. A similar size of project on the Rushmore and the Rushmore just so uh, I should have probably give you a better map but if you flip back to the previous page uh, the Rushmore area is really basically from um, it's actually from as you can see where uh, Holly Boulevard is there Split Rock East a lot of that red that you see over to Split Rock Creek a lot of that red's already completed because it was part of the Sylvan Circle area, but about half of it has not been completed. So you're gonna, we're gonna see the rest of that uh, Rushmore area um, taken care of as part of that 300,000 a year for the next several years. So John, when you say several years, three, four, five? At least five years. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we'll have the next year at 270 and then 300,000 a year for the next five. So about six more years. And then John, those would overlap. Uh, so the core part of town at 500K a year and then the Rushmore area at 300K a year. So you're looking at about 800K a year, is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Yep, yep. So then uh, we move on to the next project we have been identified as that force main extension to Sioux Falls. Uh, that's something, uh, if you guys will recall, when we built our lift station, we built it uh, 
the, the footprint of the building is large enough that we can expand that uh, to add another force main and more pumps within that lift station so we can increase the capacity um, uh, for our future growth. And that estimate at this point is about three and a half million dollars. And that force main, you can see an exhibit there, would parallel our existing force main uh, that currently runs from uh, the lift station, the new lift station, uh, along Holly Boulevard, and then we cross country, so to speak, until we get to the Sioux Falls Wastewater Treatment Facility. And what we would do uh, is we would basically have two lines then side by side. It will provide us some redundancy. Uh, but the intention was that when we built the lift station, within seven years we needed that, and based on our growth rates, that's still on track. So about five years from now, we need to have that other force main. Um, and Because otherwise we're going to start seeing ourselves running out of capacity with the pumps and the, and the uh, force main. So we're going to be exceeding some of the limitations on that. So uh, probably can get by because we've got our EQ basin. So we can use our EQ basin to some degree, but uh, it's our recommendation to get that redundancy in there as soon as possible within the next five years, I should say. And the one thing just to remember is, is we did already put the casing underneath highway 100 so that it's a lot easier for us to get that underneath there so we won't impact the highway uh, when we go to do that we'll just be able to push it through so and then raleigh sizing wise or i can't remember is it a 16 now that we run all the way there or 12 12, 12 it's now. 12 currently and we haven't sized the new one It'll de it depends okay. on what our population will be at that point but uh you know at least a 16 if not an 18 inch force main the second one yep and we put a large enough casing in that we can we can go to about any so we put a a, a large casing in underneath the South Dakota 100 um, if I could add also just so you guys know we were shut down on Friday to get our reconnection back up uh, it took them uh, they had a lot of issues with that reconnection just to give you an update on that that force main recon realignment project uh, the DOT South Dakota 100 there it took them till about 1030 to get us back connected and then another few more hours uh, till about 1 30 1 o'clock at night before they had it all backfilled and we could start running it again so uh, it took them a little longer than they originally anticipated but we got it back up and connected uh, we've got good uh, as-built locations of that um, uh, but back up and running just so you guys know that so no, that I I, I kind of shifted gears on you. As you know, South Dakota 100, we had to realign our force main, and a part of that realignment, we had to shut our main down for a certain per certain period of time. That was last Friday, and so that took. We, they thought they would be done in the afternoon. It took till 10:30 to get it reconnected at night, and then about one in the morning when they got it done. And they were still working on the city of Sioux Falls one the next Saturday on Saturday. So. Yeah, our EQ basin. Yep, yep. We have to use our EQ basin when we got. That's why we got it. You know, that's what that's there for. Um, and then going forward, we've got now that we've got the force main reconnected, we've got in a sense two EQ basins. City of Sioux Falls has a big three million gallon tank on the lower end of their uh, treatment plant that we can use as well. But um, uh, you know, we had to use this one in this case because we we're cut our cutting our force main. I didn't mean to get sidetracked there on you. I kind of shifted gears on you but this force main as you can see there is just the redundancy uh, and um, the the idea was um, the lift station footprint inside that is large enough so that we just have to add additional pumps in there two additional pumps so just a quick question on the, the what kind of time does that buy us and what's the projection once we have the second one in there how many more years it, does it buy Brandon at least 20 years is what our intention would be at least 20 years on that lift station and force main um, <clears throat> likely it depends on what size we would make that force main it may get us uh, more years than that so it kind of depends on how we want to approach that uh, you know, ideally you go a minimum of 20 years, ideally you go more than that. Uh, our existing force main obviously has gotten us nearly 30 years already, uh, but we don't have any redundancy within that and we need some redundancy on that. And in the past we've always had our lagoons and right now we still have our EQ basin. So we've got some, 
some uh, you know redundancy built in so in case we have a break we can always shut things down go to our EQ basin and then fix and repair and then start the pumps back up so so with that EQ basin um, I'm assuming it wasn't in there long enough to have any older issues no I don't Monday you just smelt it today did anybody smell it pumps were off from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon actually Saturday until it got them up because and running Okay. Yes, we did bump into the EQ basin. No, there is still water in the EQ basin, but we're drawing it back in slowly now. So is there, give us a week probably better to get it all in there. How how is uh, have you guys smelled anything? I, no, I walk by the fire department all the time. I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I think if you got if it was sitting in there a long period of time, we'd probably may start smelling it, but I doubt that you will. So, Raleigh, so say at some point we're able to build you a building out there. It's going to be right by that basin. Is that going to be? Uh, is that going to be a health issue? Anything like that? If we put a building, site a building out there? I don't think so. Not at all. I don't think you'll have any odor. As long as we get that waste out of there in the next few days, that'll be shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Um, east side trunk sewer. There's a couple of those, and we've identified them as two projects here, two separate one. Uh, as you know, the Bethany Meadows uh, T B and J have come forward and asked you in a re in a letter to extend a sanitary sewer. Um, through their property. Uh, since it crosses some other uh, property owner's property there, uh, the TBNJ have asked you to uh, do a preliminary design <clears throat> and, and possibly install that trunk line on the east side. Now this exhibit it illustrates a trunk line that goes all the way past the interstate. I don't anticipate us doing that necessarily right away. Do you, Brian? I would say we would just get up to the south edge of the interstate so that everything south of the interstate could be developed. You see that area north of the interstate in the future would be serviced by this line though. So keep that in mind as well. So, uh, but you know, that the interstate's a, a heck of a barrier and it would take a long time for that to, uh, the need to be there. And so I would uh, think we would just simply be looking at that red line from the interstate south to where it's extended at this point. And so at this point, what we've identified is, I just showed you that overall basin. Uh, we're coming forward with a planned uh, preliminary design agreement to start looking at this a little closer uh, so that we can get a better idea of where we would run that alignment. At this point, this is just a line on an aerial image. We have to get a little more detail for T, B, and J. But we've estimated this uh, project cost of about nine hundred nine hundred twenty-five thousand. Now that was just an estimate um, without looking at more detail. That's our high level, and that'd be from the interstate south to um, kind of on the back side of the east side of John Berkman's farm is about where that sewer is extended to right now. So, um, Chuck, do you want to address what the construction group has said about that, or well, they were, put your mic on? What they're looking for from the city is for us to give more direction, which this, from what I've heard tonight, Barb, ties into that. So, so I'm sorry, what was that? If, and I think we've talked to Brian, too, about how we can recover some of those costs, possibly, in the future. We oh, just I have to do the bank up front. Is that correct, Brian? Yeah, I, I think this is an important place to go to keep that development going on the east side. It also might impact um, being able to get the next elementary school on the east side rather than going over to 41st Street. Right. I, I guess I apologize. I see I've got those two flip-flopped on my maps. Um, but the Bethany Meadows one is the TBNJ, which is line item number six on our items here. 
that is the TB and J request, if you will. Uh, and it's not just for their land, it's uh, for the school's property there, and it's also for, uh, I think, uh, Tony owns some land over there as well. So it, it services that entire area. So the map that shows the line going up to the interstate, 900,000? Uh, from the interstate 4. south, yeah, about 900,000, yeah, okay. approximately 900. Um, that will be updated as we go through the preliminary design, though. There was some talk about um, once we get that trunk sewer line, that's a place that we could put a trail from yeah. the park board standpoint. So yeah, it can that, all kind of tie together. A couple things to realize about a trunk line, we always need a path adjacent to that anyway for our trucks to service. So uh, we always try to develop a, uh, a crushed concrete trail adjacent to that uh, that um, sewer alignment so that we can get in there and jet and clean out that sewer as needed. So that's a requirement anyway. So it's a good uh, paired use, if you will, uh, if you want to just piggyback on top of that, uh, that trail with uh, some asphalt for a bike trail. Okay. Then number five, I, I apologize for that. If you look at the east side trunk sewer, and we're gonna we need to rename these because we've got, we got two east side trunk sewers, but uh, yeah, yeah, cool okay, we will. Well, maybe you want to come up with some cool. The big this is the big one. That's all this really does. Um, what this kind of does, guys, is this opens up some development south of Aspen Boulevard. Uh, on the east side so if you could imagine kind of south of the funeral home out there at uh, Chestnut and Aspen on that south side what this trunk line does is open up that area south but it also will eliminate several lift stations so you can see all those dots that we've got on there French Creek Industrial Pioneer uh, golf course lift station, Rushmore lift station, and then even the Bethany Meadows lift station. What this trunk line does is actually goes up along uh, Split Rock Creek and eliminates the need for all those lift stations. So it'll consolidate them all into one larger lift station at the south end of that east side. And so as you can see, a proposed lift station on the south side, but that is, is really uh, just that. It eliminates several lift stations and consolidates them into one. And that should be a long-term plan. That's in our facilities plan of something we needed to do, but that's a very costly project uh, and one that we likely have to do in phases. So I would admit, I would anticipate, uh, you know, the lift station, force main, and then collection of those uh, so we could eliminate the golf course lift station, the Rushmore lift station, the Wyams lift station uh, initially, and then in the future we would do future extensions up there. I think a, a big portion of this is going to be funded by the city's uh, sewer fund. It's not going to be recovered by many people because most of these people are already uh, um, uh, uh, covered with sewer there is a fair amount of area that will be covered that will be future development which would be um, north of um, Redwood Boulevard and east of the creek so up where our new water tower is going that area will be serviced so, so there's probably 80 acres up in there that will be able to be serviced that we'll be able to get some cost recovery on so keep that in mind. This project is probably a project that'll that'll come uh, primarily out of our sewer fund. Um, but uh, once we get clear to the north end, we'll be able to start recovering a portion of that. Um, I wanted to go back uh, and talk about the other east side. That east side sanitary basin that TB and J have requested would be a recovered project. So we would front the cost, but then try to recover those costs over time as the developers develop. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. However, um, we haven't identified or haven't shown any recovery coming into the sewer fund. So when we start looking at our rates, keep that in mind. We haven't included any recovery dollars coming in. We've only identified the expenses at this point because they come in so slow, you can't uh, count on that necessarily, unless you assess it right away. So we're, we're in these projects, is it like when we have to go under the bridge and we have to be down so deep and 
all of that. Which this project one. is that? Is this, this one? one? This one, is the east side, be? I'll call it the trunk sewer that eliminates all the lift station. That's the tough one. Um, we're gonna, I shouldn't say tough, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough to swallow from a cost standpoint, but then not only that, um, it's gonna go through the golf course. And so we gotta minimize the impact of the golf course as well. Um, two golf courses, ours and uh, the, the par three course to the north of us. So there's on Rushmore. And we, uh, a portion of our, um, our water line was exposed um, on that too, but that isn't part of this. But anyway, I didn't mean to get sidetracked, but there, that project is, is substantial. That's about a 11.9 million um, and, and, and climbing. As that estimate originally was about 10 million, but uh, we've been about four years past since we've estimated that the last time. Is, is this one, if it goes through the golf course, Brian, that we could eliminate some of that? Problem with the restroom? Yeah, this, this would go through the golf course. We could take a look at uh, you know, constructing the restroom about the same time. Yeah. You mean on the lower end there? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and we wouldn't have no, it would be, it'd be gravity sewer then instead of a lift station. Okay. So on this, um, you know, with the cost recoveries, that's that map, I think. Uh, We've talked about in the past, uh, Sioux Falls does cost recoveries for developments, so uh, as long as we're ahead of it, I think that's the key there, um, you know, from that standpoint. And then when we're looking at um, the map, it looks like we're going down the railroad track again. Is there anything yeah. that we should be doing while we're already digging that up? We've left us an uh, area for that. That's going to be a force main. Um, that'll be on the other side of the tracks. We're we're kind of occupying the east side right now of the railroad tracks with the gravity sewer. That gravity sewer is different than this force main. Uh, the gravity sewer currently uh, takes pretty much all the east side of town and and the core part of town in that gravity sewer. And this force main uh, lift station. Uh, would would extend all the way to our big lift station at the treatment plant where our old treatment plant used to be and then we'll pump everything to Sioux Falls. It's either that or we'll pump it all the way to Sioux Falls with us. So if you if you piggyback phase one at the same time we were doing the force main to Sioux Falls we may simply tie that in to the main to Sioux Falls. So we'd have two mains, some redundancy there, but then we'd also have a force main that would go all the way to Sioux Falls from the southeast lift station. Who owns that land across to the south of Bethany? Do we know whose land that is? I mean, yeah, has there been um, any talk about development over on that side? I haven't heard anything, but, it's, um, but eventually. He's he, he has no intention though. Shears. Shears. Uh, John and uh, John Shears. Uh. I'm and at this point, we don't have any pressure there. If you guys recall, Gene Johnson owned uh, an 80 that is just where our, our well 7 is located. Gene owns an 80 there. Well, his, his heir, uh, Lind, uh, Diane does now, but uh, owns an 80 there. And he was pushing us a little bit once upon a time to get something opened up on that east side, but I haven't heard anything uh, for a few years now. And where that lift station goes in the future, you know, the longer we wait, the farther south that'll go. So right now we show it kind of at the south end of uh, McCarty Park, but reality is we'll push that as far south as we can um, when we do that project because that, the farther south we go, the more we open up south of Aspen. Okay. Uh, Lift station rehab, uh, we don't have a map for this. What we uh, really wanted to just identify on there is uh, 
Uh, Raleigh needs some money uh, just systematically to rehab our existing lift stations. And I think this year you, your budget is $58,000 uh, going forward. We've, we would like to have more than that. I think we've identified $100,000 going forward um, per year. And that's needed just for rehab, pump replacements, uh, control replacements occasionally. Uh, we have lightning strikes that cause problems. So that 100000 a year is, is a, really is a minimum. Um, so you know, giving a little money for maintenance there is uh, pretty important for those existing lift stations. That yes, it does. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, a comprehensive sanitary sewer update depending on when you um, you know feel the need that we need some updates to that uh, that's something every five to seven years you need to keep that up to speed however if we haven't completed all of our sewer projects on our current uh, study uh, you know unless there's demands other places I, I wouldn't necessarily do an update until you are um, have expended all the funds for the uh, previous study and right now we've got a fair amount of work uh, basically everything above that is identified in the original study that's currently on the books um, more recently um, we talked about in this one we don't have an estimate the um, risky pro I call it risky property uh, we'll get more creative if you want us to um, Barb, uh, that be that would be a developer driven. Um, we had originally um, Tom Odie had had plans of doing some development on the north side of Holly Boulevard. That's that last exhibit that you see there, and that's where this sewer, that green alignment, went. It, there's actually a preliminary plan or a sketch plan that was already submitted. Uh, that this trunk line kind of crossed through their development plan and then followed that railroad tracks uh, west to sandstone uh, kind of north of Sioux Valley energy which would serve that area um, so this trunk line uh, would tie into an existing lift station that's located on the west side of the Big Sioux River and south of Holly you kind of see it on the bottom of the page there or on the right hand side of the page that's just west of the Big Sioux River and that that little stations there already that services the bluffs and everything over here at this point uh, this would be simply another trunk line that would go up there we have not done an estimate on that this is another developer driven one this would be one that you would recover the costs on And I guess that's all we had at this point on projects um, identified. Uh, if you had, did I miss any, Brian, that we talked about? I think those are all the ones that we had talked about. So I don't know if there's anything else that you guys have in mind. Uh, I think that's more than we have funds for, obviously. Um, so, so we have to prioritize. So and which ones are we committed to at the moment? The West Side Trunk Sewer? Yep, I would say. Well, you can pull the plug on any project if you want. I mean, yeah, done. you've done design on the west side trunk sewer, uh, the core reconstruction. Uh, we haven't done anything on uh, that one. Uh, Rushmore area, that one's planned for next year. So one and three are so-called committed, I would say. And number two, uh, that core reconstruction. If you look back at the description, that is going to be the you know the project that will be the in 2020 so that was planned for 2020 okay, so yes that's right but and then number four uh, your force main extension that's you know that's needed within five years that's our plan uh, now if the east side trunk sewer the Bethany Meadows one uh, has a priority because of developers I could anticipate that one happening sooner uh, than your uh, lift station to Sioux Falls or your force main to Sioux Falls uh, I could see that number six on our the, the Bethany Meadows east side sewer happening before we do anything uh, with the second force main to Sioux Falls this was really kind of our uh, priority, if you will. 
with one or two of them flip flopping. So, so I think I think we need to do that force that Bethany Meadows thing, but I'm still trying to think about how we could move <coughs> up the reconstruction of some of the roads, whether they're in Sylvan Circle or the core, by using have to use sewer money for the underground stuff. But then the road stuff's got to come out of sales tax. And maybe if our cash reserves build up, doubling up there at some points to try to get ahead of the games. And rather than waiting every year, I'd like to do two a year if we could, you know, I don't know if we can swing it. Wasn't there an issue with like parking though for, for like some seniors that are in the core yeah, the, the area? Issue, the issue with doing like main and first or second and third, third or fourth and fifth, is you get too big of a construction area. Uh, we can do it. Don't get me wrong. From a from a construction it. engineering, it's it's easy to do. Just from a public perception yeah. standpoint, um, we get enough pushback now when people have to walk through right. their backyard neighbor. But if we push them out another block, well, and that's why I asked about phasing. So you could phase it though. Well, I but mean, we could right. phase. We could do some in Sylvan and some in yeah. the core we'll, we'll, and try we'll to do, do it that way. We're doing that. Sylvan, anyway. Sylvan Circle will be done in 2019. Then we're going to move down Rushmore into the um, Yellowstone, yep. North Oak or South Oak Ridge area. So we will do those at the same time. So they can't be on too, yep, we'll do, we'll start the core area moving west or moving east will be one project and then the Rushmore area will be a second project. So we'll be doing two, that's the plan anyway, is to do two core part or older part of town's projects each year. So we do, an, in a sense, a neighborhood project on the east side and a neighborhood yep. project in the core at the same summer. Yep. But I didn't know if you were talking about doubling each one of those up. So when it comes to projects like this and you're working in a core part of town, um, one thing to keep in mind is what you do is you do a staggered start. So if you're working on um, two roads next to each other, what you do is you give one a head start of two blocks, and then, then once they hit the second block, they're starting to backfill, and then you start the next one over, two blocks behind, and you just work yourself through. And then that way what you do is you have less impact on how far they have to walk. Um, we've got some interesting things with streets not fully connecting, but. Um, Overall, um, I could see us navigating that pretty well, especially with um, some of the dialogues that I've had with contractors and what they can do for temporary road uh, gravel and stuff like that as they're going through. So I, I guess I would not be opposed at all to trying to do two streets. It's just the start time has got to be delayed by, you can call it weeks or blocks, however you want to do it. But you know, I've, I've seen contracts written both ways where basically you say, you can't start this street until you make it at least two blocks on the next street or you know whatever but that way you kind of wave through and you have less impact on the residents oh I'll, I'll be honest with you guys you know you guys could you could do the whole area in two years if you one to two years if you wanted to we're doing a neighborhood reconstruction project right now in sioux falls it's 10 million dollars so if you can imagine this is these are a million dollar projects we're doing 10 million in one year. So it can be done if you want to bite off more and pay for it over time. So it's just a phasing, like uh, Tim was saying, it's just a matter of phasing. You got to start ones just like he was saying, stagger them so that you got the least amount of impact to the residents. But that it's a big impact to those folks right now. So. But yeah, it, it it is, but I'd like to I'd like to push as hard as we can and get them done because we're just gonna have other stuff coming up, so. So when I look at the map and, and kind of what the capabilities are, um, you know, and especially with, when you're getting into these bigger dollar value projects, you're getting into different uh, construction firms. So their speed of laying pipe can right. be a little bit different. And that's yeah. probably what John's kind of alluding to. So for us to look at the core part of town, just as an example, um, realistically, you could draw this into into three spots, if if you will. So basically, everything to the to the south of Brandon Elementary track and, and west would be one year. Then you'd have the core part, which would be between the two tracks, if you will, would be a second year. 
and then the third year would be everything else that would go to Split Rock. Now that's pretty aggressive, um, but it's definitely achievable when you're starting to get into those dollar values and the contractors that you're gonna bring into town for that. Um, it's just, it's a completely different scope. Um, and as you do that, um, what it would do is it would save us quite a bit of money on mobilization cost, just because you're not gonna have contractors coming every year. And we're already looking at borrowing this money um, so realistically, uh, the cost, I mean, you're, you're going to see that change a little bit as well. So if we could save some money by that, um, and then construction admin gets a lot easier when you're working on a big area like that, because we can really focus on it. Well, you know, if we, um, if we get really aggressive on this, then the question becomes, you know, we talked about covering up fourth, you know, in that, that for a short period of time, you know, six years. If we could get to fourth before six years, then the question is, is it worth doing it? It wouldn't be then. If you think you're going to do this, uh, you know, if you would do this in three years, let's say, the core part of town, it wouldn't be worth doing that mill and overlay that we were talking about on the east side on fourth. It would not be worth it because that'd be a waste of money. Um, if you're looking at... Um, if you're looking at this core part of town in three or you know three years, let's say, or four, it looks like I could break that out into three, probably four phases on uh, what's remaining there, pretty easy, or you know two, but I think that'd become pretty aggressive. Um, but we could, if you want us to look at that, what might make sense, we could look at what might make sense that way, um, and then look at it from a larger project standpoint. You, it's your call. Well, we can borrow the, the sales tax money, but I, and we'd have to borrow on the sewer fund, too. We're not going to be able to cover all of that. We'd have, we'd have to take a look. We, yeah, we'd have to look at that. We'd have to... Well, well, maybe what we could do now is now that we know kind of your, you know, your desire, uh, we can look at what's feasible. Well, that's just Tim and I. Nobody else is doing yeah. anything, so I don't yeah. know what they're doing. Right. You know, we could, uh, what I'd probably do is go back and, uh, you know, the cost comparison is pretty similar to the smaller projects that we've been doing in, in Brandon. We've got a pretty good dial in on those. What we would probably do is do a cost comparison to that, to the cost per foot of the projects we're doing in Sioux Falls right now, that larger one, and try to get an idea. Is it a 20% savings? Is it a 15% savings? Probably won't be too much more than that, though, if anything. It, 10 to 15, I would say, is what you'd save on the mold. And, and time. I mean, time is big, too. I mean, if you guys think about it, uh, three years from now, you know, that's another 10%, just because of time of construction. Um, you know, delaying that project out three years. Uh, so 10 years is quite a bit more at 3% rate increase per year, you know. I guess, Barb, since this is the first I've seen all of this, I'm, I'm in agreement that core construction, if we can accelerate that, but then I want some input from Brian on what it's going to do to impact us financially. And then as I look at all this, I'd want some input from Tammy on, is this our 5 to 10 year, say, plan for doing projects around the town and stuff, so I, I want some more staff input. I agree 100% with that, Chuck. I think it's a, a good plan to, to go with that um, and, and see what we could do um, from the staff standpoint of uh, understanding financial impacts. And, you know, when, you, when you're taking it to that big of a scope, it may even change how some of the flows are uh, if you're looking at making that that core wipeout area there, uh, Tammy may want to change some of the flow char characteristics to make it easier. Um, and then the other thing is, is when we're looking at doing a force main coming up the railroad track, that may have some impacts too. So, I mean, there's a lot going on, and Tammy's got even more homework to do. So, you're welcome. <laughs> We have some time, but you yeah, know, we have we know what's I, identified for next year. I think year. what we got ne next year is I mean, this comes back to guys your capital plan and Brian and you know, we've talked about this and Tammy about you know, it's something you need to do as a capital plan to actually have a five year plan in place. Um, we're we do a project and try to estimate the first next couple of years, um, but 
you know, it really comes down to your budget time is when we plan for next year, and that's what we end up doing. And that, and that's even if you have a five-year plan, you'll still do that to some degree. But at least if you had a five-year capital plan, you might find that uh, uh, helpful because you've got a lot of your priority projects listed in that book that you can say, well, this one needs to get done at some point, and you can move it up in the timeline or move it back. It depends on how you want it. So five-year plan will be good. Okay, so how do we uh, how do we proceed then? I I think you I mean I I think you you should look at our you know our priority list and your and then come back at the next meeting or something, Brian. I don't know what your thoughts were, Brian, but maybe in the next uh, at the next planning meeting, prioritize. Um, we'll have it set up so that we can take these projects and, and implement them in whatever year you want in your uh, your rates to see how it affects your rates. That's the important thing, I guess. Next, the next thing we we're going to talk about is uh, the rates that this this these projects affect. Yeah, you, you could ask which ones we've committed to. We've got the core reconstruction, the west side trunk. The Rushmore. Those are those are going to be ongoing ones. The Force Main Extension to Sioux Falls. That's going to that's going to be driven at some point in time in the next five years. The East Side Trunk. Um, you know the the big one. I'll be honest with you. I don't know where that's fitting in. I mean, it's twelve million bucks. Is that what no, no. He needs the other, the other one. He needs the the Bethel one. Meadows one, and and we could even phase that if we wanted to. You know, that's nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars up to the interstate. So we could cut it at Redwood. Yeah, yeah. For a little bit of cost savings. Yep. I, I'm not so concerned about the other one. Then I'm only concerned about the one that's going to yep. open up that development out there, so we don't stymie that Correct. development. That that'd be the Bethany Meadows one. That's the lower yep. cost one. I like that price a lot. That's yeah. Yeah. So easements, that kind of thing, where are we at on some of these projects? Because, I mean, that can be something that takes a lot of time. And, you know, are we working with the property owners already? Do we know where we're at? Um, you know, is there existing easements that are already cleared up and ready to go? The, the uh, I, I don't know if you want to add to that. Uh, the west side trunk sewer, there's still some construction easements to acquire there, as well as the Casey's easement. I think uh, Lisa's been working on that one. Uh, there's actually two of them that are kind of difficult ones that uh, Lisa has been working on. Um, I haven't touched base with her recently. Um, it's probably been a month since I've talked to her about that to see where she's at. Um, unless she's shared something with you, Tammy. Yeah, I talked to her about it a little bit. I think I'm going to make a trip down to Des Moines and go talk to Casey's face-to-face, -face, see if we can't get somewhere with that. Um, there's like, There's quite a few other easements that need to be... Yeah, yet. probably so. twenty some construction easements in need yet. And then, if you're looking at the, you know, the force main extension, we haven't had any discussions with Risties. Um, the rest of that would primarily be through existing easements and or the road right of way. Uh, if you're looking at the east side Bethany Meadows one, um, I'm not anticipating a lot of issues up to at least Redwood. Because right. the property on both sides of that is owned by TB and J and Tony Bosch. Well, I would vote for the east side trunk, the Bethany's before the Force Main extension to Sioux Falls, personally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, the yeah, Force Main extension to Sioux Falls. We at some point in time we're not going to have a choice. Yeah. But we'll need to. Yeah. When, you know, when we hit some targets. We've we'll got triggers built design. into that, so. Yep. We'll need to be under design with with construction to take place. Um. You know, the, the, the big one, the east side big trunk, um, we haven't talked to anybody about any easements there. Right. And what's going to trigger that? What's going to need to trigger that? I would say that um, what would trigger that more than anything would be the need for opening up development south of Aspen. Yep. Wouldn't you agree, yep. Brian? Yep. So it's probably developer driven. I mean, if we've got developers that are, if we got room to go on this Bethany extension, that's probably gets your first time home buyer and mid home buyer uh, covered 
for town, and that's something we don't have right now. Well, I think this gets back into what those developers are talking about in that committee is they want us to decide more of this and then reach out to them and go, this is what we're thinking, we're going to recover these costs, things like that, yeah. instead of waiting for them. Right. But if we do the, uh, the Bethany Meadows, that opens that part up. I haven't heard anybody talking about any land to the south, but we can certainly ask them. That would be, yeah, that would be Diane, I think, or... Um, Dolly's. Yeah, Dolly's, Dolly's and Ty The vast majority of it. Uh, Ty Doll and... JF Ventures owns about 40 acres south of the railroad tracks where we built the well number seven. They own property in there, and that's the only one I'd ever talked to about any any development issues or, or possible. I've talked to Shears in the past, and they had no intentions no. to develop. They're farmers, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, somebody might not buy that yeah. at some point, and then it. But they, that's not serviceable right now. So it would have to have a sewer line to make that. Service. Can we jump back to that west side trunk sewer just because I'm new to all this? If you yeah. can't get an easement from Casey's, then what? We have an existing easement with Casey's. Um, it doesn't meet our, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't meet our design criteria for easement width. Because it's, it's based upon depth of the pipe, and we want to go deeper, so we need a wider easement up at the top. So, I mean, if we needed to, we could squeeze it in there. Uh, we can. You certainly can squeeze tight. it in there. It's very, um, very tight. We're getting, you know, we're about five feet deeper there, and it's sandy soils, so keep that in mind. I mean, so, our, I mean, our contractors complain already because we end up with these wide trenches uh, just because of the sandy soils. If it was clay, more clays in that area is a little better because uh, you can have vertical walls and pull a trench box. But in sandy soils, you really can't do that. So we find ourselves outside of our easement is what we'll end up doing. Then what? You just you have Casey's probably come back on us because we've encroached in their property. And the, the other thing is that current easement with Casey's, if I remember correctly, it, it is right up to what would be the northwest corner of their building. I mean, it's within yeah. a, a few, a, a couple of feet. Yeah, it's... T so we were looking at making it wider to the west, moving the, the main to the west. Um, if, we're, if we need to dig in the same one, um, it, it's just the not contract, the contractor's going to have to do some uh, measures to it would, ensure that Casey's doesn't fall in the hole. Let's put it that way. Well, they, what they would do is they would encroach on the railroad side, <laughs> is where we would encroach because we've actually pushed it west and south anyway. So, what would ha see, they've got property on both sides of our easement, mm -hmm. and they feel that even the property west of the easement next to the railroad is pretty valuable to them. And that's where the real issue is coming in. We've asked to actually just take purchase property to the west of that that's in, in, in all practical purposes so unusable. unusable for them because it's between the railroad tracks and our permanent easement that we already have. And we were just trying to encroach into that area, not between the existing easement and their building. We were just trying to go from there to the west. And they, it's really, I don't know if it, they just, I think they understand everything. Um, it probably wouldn't hurt to be a face-to-face. -face. No, case, Casey's is an unusual, I shouldn't say unusual, corp it's a corporation. Yeah, I just want to see them hold up our project. You know, the other, the other option we've talked about, which would be much more expensive, we could come east down Holly and then south down Sioux and just skip that whole railroad property in there. It becomes much more expensive because now we're tearing up Holly. And, well, Holly's going to get torn up anyway, but we'd be tearing up Sioux. Yeah, it'd be a, ways, it'd be a significant tracks. increase in cost. We haven't. We, we certainly could. I don't think it would. It'd be a pretty easy one to do. Just yeah. So I mean, yeah, if we take, it, and, oh, go sorry, ahead, sorry. So if we if we're moving it to the west, is that our eastmost line that's close to the building? We could move that to the west, right? So sales pitch. Tell them they could expand their building on the west side if they ever needed to if they make this change because that's going to be the thing that's on their mind the most is if they could ever expand their building so handle it that way and hopefully that gets us a bonus make sense and uh, they really wouldn't be able to expand their building 
Because the easement width that we're talking about is about 40 feet, isn't it? Yeah. And they're about 42 feet from the edge of their building to the railroad right away. So we're looking at, at land that they wouldn't use or can't use currently, but they would not gain anything that they could actually add on to. If we buy it from them, they make some money on it. We've approached that too. Are we willing to buy it from them? I think we were. I think Lisa was approaching it that way. I'll be yep. honest with you. I think I Lisa think has approached it that way. I just don't think they want to sell anything. They haven't. I don't think they've reached out to Lisa for a while. The last conversation I had with her was a week or so ago. Um, okay. I don't think there's been much movement from Casey's. Just they haven't responded to her. So if we can't agree on a price, you know, if, if we want to buy an easement, um, then we could certainly look at condemnation. I think what I would do suggest is you have Lisa come back and give you an update or Tammy an update that she can update you guys because I think if you had a timeline even with condemnation it takes a little time uh, but once you have started that process you can go in and do the work and then the courts settle the case later um, but it still takes time to get to that point so I think Lisa needs to weigh in on that she's been working on those easements but How significantly does the price change if you go over and down on Sue? I don't remember if we actually did an estimate. It's significant, though. I mean, it would be... Uh, I'm, we, I'm, we, we basically tear up half of Sue yeah. from Holly south to the railroad tracks. And it, well, it, which I, I hate to... Give me, uh, I mean, give me some more time to do this, but you're three to four, four hundred thousand dollars real fast. And it would impact Casey's a lot more. <laughs> so that's what we've tried to tell them that, you know, if we have to go around our right of way, I mean, that's, we, we've been down this road of, you know, buying it, saying, you know, explaining that, you know, it's, it's, le it's not really an impact to you, but it, it really didn't go anywhere with them. So, cause, cause we've talked about going down the right of way, which would impact two driveways of theirs, access in and out of their property which would be a huge impact, but anyway. Well, and I think maybe in the past, we maybe weren't as convinced that we needed to do this, but I think we're pretty convinced that we need to proceed with this trunk sewer main. And so we're, we're gonna do it. So they better, either they need to cooperate or I guess we go to plan B. I'm not sure what that is, but. Just plan B is wait until you have it. And do, do I understand this right? This impacts Justin's property too? Yep. Okay. Well, this, this impacts a number of things. It impacts the water treatment plant, it impacts the pool, it impacts Justin Oakland's development because that pipe right now currently is running about 70, 80% full coming down main. Um, so we'd be fairly limited and in, in Justin could you know, probably move forward with phase one about 15 to 20 homes, um, but we still have issues with uh, when we when we discharge the, the backwash water from the pool and the water treatment plant. We can't do that at the same time. This this project the station is is full. So so we're planning to start this, John. You said summer of 2018. Yes. Right? So Spring. what would be our drop dead data when we have to settle this easement issue? By December. Yeah. We plan on bidding in January. I wonder if any of our developers know anybody at Casey's. You know, I think Casey's is a really challenging corporate citizen. I'm not even sure they're a chamber member. They're pretty challenging, yeah. And then, so the 1.3 million for this trunk sewer, does that include cost recoveries from Oakland, correct? Is that what he was paying to upgrade the lift station? Or I remember something. It, yeah, about nobody, that. it did. Cost. It wasn't very much. Yeah. Twenty some thousand, or four, I can't remember. Twenty or forty thousand. But I no, it doesn't take that credit into account. Um, that is simply the the cost of the sewer portion of this project. Um, so including the lift station upgrade, but it doesn't take into consideration the credit we'll get back from Justin. Okay. 
actually none of our projects have done that because it's such usually such a small amount that comes in per year it's hard to show much of a credit there and and it's just an estimate anyway but this project is a high priority in our yeah. opinion yeah so do we want to um so we want to look at the west side the core reconstruction the rushmore and the bethany and helping provide more money for the rehab and include that in the sewer rates to see what it looks like is that what we want to do council or what do you want what do you want to see next so if i heard you correctly that would be one two three six and seven is that correct All right The force main to Sioux Falls does have to happen at some point. Though. Right, but so I keep think that in mind. That off. We'll leave that one off for now. I don't know about the sewer update. I mean, I think that that's important too. But I think you know we can't do everything at least at, right now. Yeah, I don't know. I would say you wait with that. I mean, we've got you've got a lot of the we've got it identified in the report. It's just a matter of picking off the projects that are listed in there. So, so one, two, three six and seven tammy are you comfortable with them yep that's what i would pick okay would six to just clarify would six just go to redwood then is that what you guys are looking at i would think so and then when you do it can you do it both ways with us doubling up on those projects yeah. in those two core areas and then not yeah i can so okay first of all just um one two and three are already kind of on the books to happen next year okay um so the next phases which would be um the you know about half a million in the core part of town we'll we'll make that happen in bigger chunks then is that what i'm hearing so, or are you thinking even next year's project being consolidated with a much larger project? Okay. One one word of concern, if you want to, let's just say include the rest of Maine, Cardinal, and Robin in that. That's probably going to delay our January bid date. Which yeah, because we have to design it. In, in any way, shape, or form at this point in time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <No. laughs> The question I've got is, uh, how much, how, uh, how many, how many phases do you want in the core part of town? Two, three, four, three. Okay, three, three. Uh, it looks like a three breaks off pretty easy. Is there stuff that, there's stuff that we don't understand with the folks right. that are underground. I mean, there might be a spot where it's really one and a half is the right number, or you know what yeah. I mean? Like take it to this spot. Like I just picked a spot where it looked like a line in the sand but you know it may be four it may be you know I don't know Tammy will be able to look at the map better and go from there so but sure if we could do a compressed schedule I think that would help us because like I said we're going to get different bidding we're going to get different I mean and, and we can communicate that to the residents that we're doing much needed improvements and you know we were talking about you know I think it was 300,000 or something like that for the fourth street repair temporary well if we're going to get this done in three years i mean that's money we didn't spend at all right. so i mean that's three hundred thousand we just right. saved yeah, so just, yep. yeah yeah so. you were thinking that that so that'd make it that help on your re, the, the street portion portion of those recovery costs so 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 john i know that you have the software to do all of the rate stuff right yeah you've got all yes. of that okay yep. so it's it makes sense in. to me that you would do that but for some of this other stuff I think that we need to be careful because you know we do have that whole vision out there of of not awarding everything to Stockwell so I think we have to be very careful with that and I don't know how you guys are going to work that out on all of this stuff you have the information but I just want to make sure that we're not setting ourselves up for Stockwell's is doing everything without us talking about that okay, okay? These no are just, offense. We're just planning. Yeah. 
this point. Well, I think that ties into, Barbara, what we were talking about, Tammy being able to authorize to do things and go out and get bids, so to speak, and things like that. So I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see how bad it looks. One thing, to, one thing to be thinking about, if we're doubling up and being that aggressive about that core area, we can turn that back into gravel, but usually you don't pave the project until the very end. So if the contractor starts to get behind or anything, that might have to stay gravel road until that next spring. So I think we should be very clear and upfront with the residents during that time, which is usually better for the sub base anyway, to let it go through a freeze thaw cycle and then pave it that next year. I'm cringing, I'm just thinking, just for verification, I've worked here for 30 plus years. I have yet to see a contractor that'll start on one spot and work two streets at the same time. One reason is because you're not just replacing the sewer, we're gonna be replacing water, the sewer, there's storm sewer that's been already documented coming up off of Aspen Boulevard on these streets. So nine times out of 10, and I'll use Sylvan Circle as an example. They came in, did all the storm sewer first. Then they came back and tore the road up and did the storm, or the sewer. Then they came back and tore it up again and did the water. So in order for a contractor to come in town and have them do two streets at the same time, that's going to be a contractor beyond any of the likes I've seen in the last 30 years I've worked here. It is actually. Unless you get two it, companies working together to do that it, project. But then again, let's just take an example how wet this year was. Can you imagine the delays? If you start this project even in April, you're going to be bothering the schools because their main routes are coming up around that school so much, and you're going to tear that street up from April till November. Cool. So I, I realize it's going to be a problem for them too, but we actually, if you look on that map, the sewer actually goes all the way up to the school itself, which is going to be a nightmare with all the kids working around there. So I, I'm, a, I'm a little leery of us trying to bite off too much at one time to start. You know, maybe once we get to 4th Street, then take a bigger bite, because you can actually phase that in directions too, because right now the way the square runs, everything runs to Cedar Avenue and then runs down to 4th. So you could phase that a lot easier. It's just going to be the difference in the lengths. And that's why we have you guys as professionals, because you know what you're doing. I think what you're hearing from us is we want to get it done as fast as we can because we're kind of tired of getting beat up about it, and it needs to be done. So however that needs to work, I, that's your guys' gig. There are ways in the contract documents to let them know that they can only take, they can only rip up two blocks of street, and then they have to put it back to gravel before they rip up the next street. So when we're talking about accesses and whatnot, there are ways to kind of plan around that. But then it gets into the paving. We probably wouldn't pave till the end. It takes long enough, I won't be on council anymore, so I won't have to hear the complaints. I just think, uh, I, I, you know, I, I agree with Raleigh. Um, I do think there's the possibility of doing more than what we've been doing each year, though. So there is. There's um, a, there can be a balance. It's there. certainly doable, and and I I like blowing and going. You know, send them do as much as you can, and just what's going to happen is this, in my opinion, if you limit the contractor to two blocks at a time, you're going to pay for that significantly. Because when they come in with a water crew or a storm sewer crew or a sanitary sewer crew, they want to go. They want to rip up the street all at once when they've got their demo crew in. <clears throat> they want to come in and tear everything out at once. They don't want to bring that demo crew in three, four, five times. Same thing with the pipe crew. Once they're laying water pipe, they want to lay water pipe. They don't want to stop at two blocks. It can be done. It can be phased. But you're going to pay for it. So I don't think... We're going to see much of a cost savings in mope charges versus stopping and starting with more than one crew. And after you put the gravel down, you got to tear, take the gravel back up and reshape. So it can all be done, and I don't have a problem with it. But please be aware, it's not going to be significant cost savings, number one. And 
in other communities I've been in, that's what we've done. We've done whole neighborhoods, not just a street, but whole neighborhoods. Very few complaints. Here, even with the way that we've done it, we receive a huge number of complaints with access, especially if we're going to interrupt the school. We're going to start before school is out. I'm just cautioning you. <laughs> we will have concerns expressed. So. I appreciate the explanation. I mean, that makes sense, and it doesn't sound very efficient to do a little chunk and then come back and do a little chunk and do a little chunk. So I guess I would be more in favor of what what Raleigh is saying by doing it more strategically until we get to like fourth. So maybe we want to plan it out. How many years was it going to be for like Cardinal to fourth? Was that going to be four or five years? Yeah, you figure a block, a street a year, it's going to be you know four years to get there. Um, and every projects I've ever been involved with where you say, we're going to limit you to two blocks and get all that done, and then you can go to the next two blocks. After the first phase, there's a sit down between the contractor and the city, and they're saying, we're not going to get it done, A. We need to get moving. We need to tear up more than what you're telling us we can. Every single time. And that's probably eight to 10 projects. So then how do we do more than one street a year? That's what, that's yep. the, that's yep. what I'm yep. looking for. You bite for. the bullet. You do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's ways to do it. We'll there's come back with it. a plan. And it's basically uh, sitting down and telling those affected property owners this is the way it's going to be. Um, it's going to be inconvenient for a period of time. Uh, you're going to have to deal with it. But in the end product, a year or two after it's done, everybody thinks it's great and nobody remembers the hassle. Well, let's see what the difference is price wise. Well, I, I, and I think when people see the progress, I think people are going to, mm -hmm. and when we have a timeline and we actually have that timeline, people are going to say, okay, you're going to be at my street this year. Yep. And they're going to see that progress and they're going to probably back off a little bit. Also, I would err on, we'll see where the numbers come in at, but if you're going to bite this bullet, be careful on the budget the following year when that debt comes in because budgets are going to be cut, stuff's going to be cut because you're going to have a large debt. But we'll see, we can see where the numbers come into. But I just want to err on those. Okay, anything else um, for the good of the cause? Anybody? Okay, so what's our next meeting like? We scheduled one for the 26th, but we can delay it. Um, you know, maybe that second Monday in, uh, second Monday in October is the holiday, isn't it? Um, you know, maybe that second week in October, that Tuesday. Yeah, we got to give. Yeah, there's a lot of work that's going to take place between. I, 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 when you're going to do the interviews for the mayor too. Yep. That's September. No, no, do do the. John can't make it on the 26th of, of September. Yeah. So we'll still do the interviews. Uh, maybe delay it until well, let John take a look and yeah, see what you his guys work let us know. Like. We can, sometime the first half of October. I think we kind of know we know what we're doing next year, so we just kind of need to start working on the following year. I think we have a, a good yep. handle on what we're interested in. Yeah, Do you I, feel I would that just way? Say I, I've agreed with what you know. Brian has said, Dana, I want to get stuff done, but I'd like to do it in an orderly fashion, not delay based on complaints we're going to get from residents. I wouldn't care if I wasn't a short term <laughs> barb. I just I think at a certain point you just get to I be agree. I don't care, we're gonna get it done and yeah it's gonna be inconvenient to you, but live with it. As long as we're all ready to field the phone calls and take some of the heat off of the city people. Okay. We are, I think. I think we are. Yeah. We're tough, right? We're all tough. Okay. So okay. I guess to build off of the kind of what Chuck's saying there, so once we get this plan, I think it's key that it's a plan that we stick to. So um, you know, like this year, we, we didn't do the Rushmore project and we didn't do the Redwood Storm Sewer and, and that was because of budget and things changed. Um, but what that does is then it pushes it out. So we need to be understanding that that's the plan and, and things may come up where you might have a, an extra 5% or 10%, but we're committed to 
these streets this year well we got to make it work that year somehow uh, and I think that's the communication that's going to make it that much better for us and the residents will understand it that much more when, when we're able to communicate it that way um, and then um, you know looking at you know the one comment that was made tonight is, is that capital plan of that five to ten years when it comes to all these projects and then you know Christina mentioning hey you know when we do start taking this debt load on that's going to impact the budget um, because now we've got payments um, you know I think there's some homework that we should be doing before we make these decisions on that side so you know whether it's Christina forecasts a number of you know hey your, your payments are going to be a quarter million dollars a year I think we need to know that ahead of time as well um, so that we can start forecasting that um, and then I had something else but I forgot it so we're gonna go with that um, I would like to add one thing I know uh, at the water meeting we talked about a six-month reserve instead of a 12-month reserve are we thinking the same thing for the sewer fund okay so based on that comment um, understanding how much reserve is available outside of that six month would be a number that would help as well Christina so like right now if we're negative or positive above that or below that six months it'd be nice to kind of have a, a feel for that because not that I would want to spend that immediately um, but just like in this case the water and the sewer um, you know if we're sitting at you know in, a, in excess of that six months then you know that's potential cash that we're saying we're willing to spend uh, because we're you know our target is a six months so it, it, it's not something that has to happen tonight don't I yep. mean I think we're all ready to I be can done tell you for the sewer night, is right around the six month um, next year's expenditures are 2.3 million we're at a million right now in the sewer uh, yeah perfect very good yeah just some some stuff that'll help us um, you know when we're looking at it and then the other side of this is um, you know understanding the the cost recovery side of it um, you know a, an example of, of Oakland I can't remember if that's 80 acres that he has but uh, 80 acres uh, in Sioux Falls that turns out to be four hundred thousand dollars in cost recoveries when it comes back uh, because there's areas in Sioux Falls that they're doing five thousand dollars an acre um, you know that's not something that we want to uh, shy developers away from but we need to understand if um, you know they're willing to help be a part of that in Sioux Falls they already are uh, especially on the east side of town there's cost recoveries that are north of five thousand uh, or right at five thousand dollars an acre so when you take an 88 acre section times five thousand that that darn near half a million makes a big difference especially when we're talking about uh, that nine hundred twenty five thousand um, dollars that we're looking at uh, on the east side of town um, you know, I know that TB and J is looking at doing, you know, that 80 acre section. Well, that covers almost half of that. Um, so those are huge impacts when it talks to rates. Uh, we already have uh, $1,500 on the sewer and water on the east side and on the west side. Uh, so there's already those recoveries that are coming from the Bethany lift station on the east side and work we did with the booster station. So that's already in that gets imposed already but this would be over and above that yep I just have a quick comment I just wanted to just make sure to encourage staff to give feedback to or don't hesitate to remind us of stuff like cost recoveries <laughs> or don't forget what this is going to do to the budget because while you guys might sit there and and have it constantly going through your head because you know it inside now we 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 don't and I almost always find it very enlightening when you guys chime in or Raleigh or any of the other staff as well so it's very much appreciated and encouraged so if you think we're crazy and you're gonna start losing sleep at night let us let us know because we don't we do not want to put you in that position <laughs> Anything else? Um, so then, John, when you're looking at that, then we need we're going to have to make a determination what we're going to do at Fourth Street if we if I change our strategy a little bit. If we, yeah. And so maybe it's. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to decide then. Yeah. Right. 
Okay, uh, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, motion by Clark, second by Parsons to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Opposed? Okay, we are done.